All right, we're talking about power and where it comes from and how to get it efficiently without a ton of effort. YouTube loves when we use the word power, so it's obviously being searched for. You guys love power as well. Why? Because it makes the game easier. We finish points a little bit quicker, and as we get better in this game, the power should be increasing. So let's first talk about where does power come from, and it's all about your racket head speed. So racket head speed is true whether it's your forehand, your backhand, your serve. The only place it may not be true is, is or it is not true, is on your volleys, right? Or maybe the return of serves where you're using much shorter swings, compact strokes in order to use the opponent's power. But racket head speed is simply just how fast is the racket moving, all right? And now most of us can, can get this pretty effectively, right? But if you're looking for kind of that higher echelon of power, there's a couple things that you've got to make sure that you're doing. And the first and probably the most important is that you're eliminating tension, okay? So regardless what grip you're in, if you're holding your racket tight, you're moving a stick, you're swinging a stick and it can only go so fast. We want to swing a bullwhip. And that means relaxing the hand and allowing gravity to give it a boost as we swing. As the racket climbs up, we create leverage, and then it moves forward, and the racket can pick up speed. The second thing we want to focus on is our stance. All right, so regardless if I'm stepping into the ball, hitting semi-open or completely open, I want to make sure that I can create leverage to get a weight transfer. All right, so a great way to practice this is just start in a semi-open stance, start with the weight on the back foot, and get your racket moving forward. All right, if you can hear the strings, all right, you're getting pretty efficient racket speed, easy power, all right, and that is where it starts. What we want to focus on is an efficient swing, all right, and this is, it doesn't matter whether it's next gen, modern, we just want to make sure that the racket is starting high and it has the ability to work low under the ball as it works through contact. All right, and if, even if you're taking the ball on the rise, we still want the racket lower than the hand, all right? This is one of the most key points of a stroke at any time. I want to make sure the racket is below my wrist, my wrist is bent, that it's below the hand in order in part spin. Even if I hit a dip drive, which means a ball that's up higher, I'm going to let the racket fall and then work through it. And that means I'm even still hitting down and the racket still starts below my hand. So make sure that you have the correct swing, and that is simply starting with the racket tip up and allowing the racket to drop below, all right? Now the second piece, and maybe the most important to a consistent, efficient, powerful forehand, is your contact point. I see contact points break down all the time, and it's for a number of reasons. Either one, our timing is off. The way that we're sending and receiving, at the end of the day, tennis is a sending and receiving game. The way that we're we're timing the ball is off and therefore we're either swinging too early and contact is happening i've kind of lost that power potential that 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 sweet spot to where power is at its greatest or i'm late and this is the most common to where the arm gets tucked in and i can't get the racket operating away from my body all right and that has a tendency to be part of footwork and that's the second piece that we're going to talk about so if we know that poor timing and and improper footwork is what disrupts the contact point let's talk about how to correct them and number one is going to be proper timing and this starts actually with your feet all right we want to make sure that we're hitting that split step just before our opponent hits the shot, all right? And from there, we can go ahead and start moving in the direction that the ball is coming. And now what you can see there is I hit my split step, I'm initiating the unit turn. And the unit turn is kind of your cheat, right? It allows you to get half the stroke done before you actually have to initiate the forward swing, all right? And we wanna make sure as that ball, before that ball has bounced on your side of the court, the unit turn has been completed, all right? And we can get into other things like how big the stroke is. If, you, if, you're, if your backswing is too big, that can also cause you to be late. But what we wanna focus on is getting half of the stroke done as quickly as possible and then keeping the ball out in front to contact. I've seen some of the slowest players in the world have the best contact because of their preparation, their ability to anticipate, and it's about understanding weight transfer. So when we're talking about weight transfer, let's talk about closing the stance and stepping forward. On a closed stance forehand, 
it, what we're referring to is we have the opportunity to step out with our right foot and then step into the ball with our non-dominant foot. So I'm referring to myself as a righty, obviously the opposite as a lefty. But as I've stepped in, what we want is I want to prep, prep the racket on the unit turn. And as I step in, this creates a pendulum effect. So from here, you can see as the weight transfers forward, the racket starts to fall. And this allows me to get the contact out in front. Now, what a lot of people don't really put enough emphasis on is what the orientation of their chest is. If I step into a ball and my chest is oriented to the side, look at my contact, look at my elbow. But the minute I open my chest, you get the Diego Schwartzman, you know, doesn't Federer, whoever, you will all see their chest forward. And that is really important to keep the contact out in front. So you can swing just as fast as you want, but if your contact doesn't allow you to make the contact out in front of the body with the arm either slightly bent or completely extended, slightly bent is fine by the way too. I know Holger Rune and the Alcarez, they're hitting the ball with the arm super straight. Myself, Djokovic, number of players, <laughs> I'm putting, I just put myself in the same level of Djokovic, arm bent, okay? But make sure you pay attention to your chest. So that's the closed stance. So what about the open stance? Now the open stance, what I have attended, what I see too often are players stepping backwards and then falling backwards, right? Or they don't get their weight forward, they get their weight up. So they step here and then they're jumping up. It's really, really important as you step out, right? I wanna make sure I'm stepping out. If I have to go a little bit behind, that's okay too, but I wanna get my weight behind the ball. So meaning the ball is incoming, I get my weight out in the direction the ball is traveling. And now from here, I can find that contact as my weight transfers to my left foot. It's like a little 180. So as I'm here, I finish out to the left foot. If I'm doing that consistently, I'm really putting maximum energy to the ball and I'm allowing that rocket head speed to be as efficient and as easy as possible. So in summation, if you're looking for more power on any of your strokes, forehand, backhand, whatever it might be, focus on racket head speed, listening for those strings, and an efficient weight transfer. Two, focus on keeping contact out in front. You can swing as fast as you want and practice, but in match play or anything else, if you're not finding the contact out in front, you're not gonna have optimal power, all right? Make sure your chest is forward and make sure the footwork is correct. Now footwork, we tied into number three, and that's all about your timing, right? Making sure that you're seeing the ball and you're getting behind the ball on your side when you need to, and making sure that you have that unit turn well before the ball has hit your side. Guys, I hope this video has helped you an absolute ton. If it did, leave me some comments down in the comment section. Hit that like button, hit subscribe if you never wanna miss a player court video. And be sure to check out the community if you're looking for new players in your area or maybe even a lesson. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.